Hi, welcome to the 5 to 9 Hustle. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about some common men's fashion terms that are going to be used as keywords on eBay and Poshmark and sites like that. Um, and ones that get used pretty interchangeably. And so we're going to look at the actual, what they actually mean, and then also talk about when is it right to be wrong, and when is it always wrong to be wrong. So let's start out with one of the most common ones, I think, anyway, and that is khakis and chinos. And I've got some good informational sites pulled up. I could probably link to these if you really want to read about the difference between chinos and khakis. Um, but this is from Orvis, and they've got a brief history of how, how all this stuff came about. But essentially... There are there there is a difference between a chino and a khaki. So there are three main differences between a khaki pant and a chino. All right, and so the very first one that's probably the easiest tell is on khakis. The stitching is visible. Right, I brought some examples from my own closet, and then on a chino, the stitching is not visible. It's done on the inside. Hard to show the edge of a pant leg for some reason. So that's a key tell. The others would be the material. Typically your khaki is trending more towards workwear. It's gonna be a heavier material. And um, usually usually a cotton. Whereas a chino is gonna be lighter. It's usually a cotton blend and uh, is meant to move a little better. And then fit. Um, khaki is going to be very traditional straight leg fit, whereas the chino is typically going to be tailored to be a little more fitted. And I think a great way to think about this, if you ever have a question, uh, about what kind of pant you're wearing, just, just pretend you need to go outside and mow the lawn. If you're wearing khakis, you're probably fine. Yeah, I'll go mow the lawn. If you're wearing chinos, you're going to think to yourself, oh man, I need to go change my pants before I mow the lawn. Now, does this matter? with selling pants on eBay, say. I, I think that a big slice of the general men's pants wearing public uses the, the phrase khaki and chino pretty interchangeably. So I wouldn't fault anyone that uses both keywords in a title or an item description. Me personally, um, it's, it's almost a little brand specific, honestly. Um, like, I'm never going to describe a pair of Carhartt uh, as a Chino. And something like Bonobos, I'm not going to describe as a Khaki when it's clearly a Chino. But I think there's plenty of times where it makes sense to, to use both words because the people looking for what you have to sell might use either one. So I think in the case of Chino versus Khaki, it is uh, definitely right to be wrong. And further complicated by the fact that khaki is a color as well. So you might have a chino that's a khaki color. So it's definitely right to be wrong on chinos and khaki. Next, let's look at sport coat versus blazer. Uh, and we could do suit coat as well because Tom James has all three pictured here. Uh, but really, it's sport coat and blazer are what get thrown around the most interchangeably. Um, you really never want to interchange sport coat and suit coat. If you're trying to sell just a suit coat, you should probably call it that. Um, but the primary differences between a sport coat and a blazer, a sport coat almost always is patterned. This is a sport coat on the left here. This dashing looking gentleman is wearing a plaid sport coat. Blazers are pretty much like 99.9% .9 of the time a blazer is going to be a solid color usually blue or black but you will see he's got like a, a burgundy uh, you see green um, different color clubs have different color blazers but almost always a solid color and typically will have metal buttons as well and the um, I believe both the sport coat and the blazer will tend to be a little bit roomier fit than a suit coat because um, they're, they're most likely going to be worn over something. But uh, Now, does this matter if you're selling a sport coat? Is it okay to call it a blazer? Oh, and by the way, a sport coat and a sports coat is the same thing as well. Um, these terms are used so 
frequently in an interchangeable way, I really do not think it matters if you call a sport coat a blazer. Um, my thinking on it is if I have room for both, I'll go sport coat slash blazer. If I only have room for one in the title, I will use the correct term. Then in the description, I'll go ahead and use both just to make sure. Uh, again, the general coat wearing public, I think probably uses these terms pretty interchangeably. And just because they look for a men's blazer doesn't mean they're looking for a solid color uh, coat with metal buttons. And I think you'll see that even if you're at the mall in a department store, uh, they will use they'll, they'll they'll use the terms interchangeably as well. A suit a suit coat, of course, um, is mostly distinguishable because it comes with a suit and will match the pants. Um, usually a more tailored. Uh, usually we'll have more padding in the shoulders, though. What is that called? More structured? Is that what that is? I'm still learning suits. All right. Up next. A super common one, button up versus button down. Uh, also, we could throw into this the button front shirt. Um, so quite simply, a button down shirt is referring to the collar of a button up shirt. Simple, right? Now, uh, button down shirts have collars that actually button down. That's what it is. That's the difference between a button down and a button up or I like to call them button front shirts. In the end, does it matter? I don't think so. I think the general shirt wearing public, if you say um, I, I'm shopping for a long sleeve button down, I think they can picture in their mind either one of these two shirts here. Um, I think maybe if someone is very finicky about their collars and they love the fact that the collar buttons down and they're searching for it that way, could have a problem if if they're seeing results that uh, are not button down collars, but I th generally speaking, I think this is one where it's okay to be wrong or go ahead and use both terms. Uh, just in your item specific for collar, just specify you know the correct one. I would say, but yeah, that is the difference between button down and button up. Next, let's look at board shorts versus bathing suits. This one is interesting, and I think not very many people are aware there is actually a difference between the two. And the easiest tell of all is swim trunks or a men's swimsuit will have that mesh lining that we're probably all very familiar with. Board shorts uh, never have that lining. They also tend to be longer. Some of the materials tend to be different. But the, the, the main idea is swim trunks or swimsuits are for... Um, recreation. Board shorts were designed for physical activity in the water, i.e. surfing. Um, I would tend to use the correct keyword on these. I, I do think you could possibly get a return if someone was expecting board shorts and got swim trunks. I'm not really sure on that one. I'm kind of in the middle. Now let's look at when it is definitely not okay to be wrong. Um, see here, I've done kind of a weird search. Patagonia REI Cool. So I searched for three brands, and I actually had a, one search result come up that matched all three brands, you know, which is, which is odd. So I pulled up the listing to look at the detail, and down here in item specifics is where, where this stuff is. Look at the theme right here. The theme of this shirt is Arcturex Prana Patagonia Columbia Cool REI Outdoor. That's the theme of this shirt. No, it's not. The shirt doesn't have a theme. It's just like a white or gray shirt. And it's the North Face. So they stuffed all those in there intentionally um, to try to appeal to buyers of similar brands. Which I... I get, I understand the thinking there, um, but that is a textbook example of keyword stuffing right there. It's just done a little cleverly because it's uh, in the item specifics. Here's one where you can see uh, they weren't really bothering to hide it. It's just right in the title. First of all, that's how you spell Columbia, the company, not the brand. Uh, I can tell this is a Columbia jacket from the the logo on it. Um, 
and they have the the actual model of it and then just at the end of their title they just throw on patagonia rei north face uh, again looking um thinking people that like patagonia or rei or north face coats will also like this columbia coat it's similar audience so again i understand the thinking um, but that's just terrible practice and i've got one more example right here these are some cool cargo pants and, and what's interesting about these particular searches is like you'll have no problem selling cool um cargo pants you don't have to keyword stuff to do that so they've got the uh the brand is cool the product line is the north face no it's not uh the fabric type is patagonia these cool cargo pants are made of patagonia fabric that's the type of fabric they use in the in the north face product line over at cool no so that's all just stupid and it's um keyword stuffing and then lastly and this is a little more nitpicky of an example here uh we've got this somewhat cool brooks brothers polo shirt um they're calling it a gingham check color block button down shirt so it's a polo it's not a button down uh, that is not gingham gingham is a very small uh check pattern very small squares and is that is that color blocking no it's really not this is just a cool pastel plaid uh polo shirt i don't have time to sit around and report items like this and say hey and flag it to ebay say hey this seller is using you know black hat tactics um i'm not gonna hide their their names on here though uh, but the reason this is a bad idea is when people search for a thing whether they're on google ebay bing yahoo whatever it is when you search for something that's the results that you want to see so if i'm searching for a patagonia jacket and every third or fourth listing is a columbia jacket or a north face jacket or whatever it is that's a bad user experience and that's um something that can cause people to be less engaged with the platform and leave the platform and as sellers we want buyers to stay on ebay and keep buying on ebay so don't keyword stuff i i like i said i understand the thinking and i can see where that's a good idea but overall it's a bad idea it's a poor user experience and it could very easily lead to a return as well you know if i've if i've settled in on a certain type of jacket or shirt i think okay yes this this is what i want now real quick i'm just gonna filter you know price uh lowest to highest and see if i can get a better deal and then i see yours that's actually a columbia jacket and it's like oh 29.95 i can't believe that's a steal buy it now and then what happens they realize what is that that's not what i meant to buy and then you have either a cancellation or a return or a very easy item not as described on your hands so don't keyword stuff um do go ahead and use both keywords when it's common vernacular you know i think like khaki and chino button down that's not an example of keyword stuffing but you know keep it white hat so I thought it would be appropriate just to add to that. Uh, this is the search manipulation policy is what that would fall under. And uh, manipulating eBay's search and browse experience by adding popular keywords in your listings that have no relation to your items is not allowed. Or using other tactics that could mislead buyers. And um, if that's what keyword stuffing is, whether you do that in your title, your description, or your item specifics, and the penalties can be a range of actions and the one i thought is most interesting uh, they can go ahead and end and cancel your listings but this is what i thought was the most interesting hiding or demoting all listings from search results and then lowering seller rating adding buying and selling restrictions and suspending your account and any fees that were paid in relation to those listings aren't going to be refunded but I thought hiding and demoting all listings from search results was one of the most interesting things there. So if you keyword stuff, you could actually wind up tanking your entire store uh, by having your listings hidden when people are actually searching. So 
Uh, like I said, definitely not a best practice. Always be honest, it's always the best policy. And only describe your item in your item title, your item specifics, and your item description.